For this video, you're going to need a pair of compasses and a pencil, a protractor, and a ruler. The first construction we're going to look at is known as an angle bisector. The word bisect means to split into two equal sized pieces. So we're going to take an angle, like this one here, which we will label as angle A, B, C, and we're going to split this into two equal sized smaller angles. When we construct this, we're only allowed to use a pair of compasses and a ruler though, so no protractor for this question. To construct an angle bisector, we start by taking a pair of compasses. We place the sharp point of the pair of compasses at the point of the angle, so down here at point B, so something like this. We then construct an arc that goes through the lines AB and BC, so like this. This arc crosses those lines in two places. I'm going to label them on as E and Q. You don't actually need to mark these labels on, but it will help me explain what to do next. You then take the pair of compasses, and at this point I normally make them a little wider. You don't have to, but I find it a bit easier. We place the sharp point at one of those points P or Q, so let's place it on P, and we draw an arc here. We then move the pair of compasses down to point Q, but crucially we don't change their width, it must be exactly the same size as the arc we just drew. We then draw an arc from Q like this. If we then draw a straight line between the points where these two arcs met and the point B, we will have formed our angle bisector, so something like this. This angle has now been split into two equal size smaller angles, so this green angle here is the same size as this blue angle here. Next we're going to look at what we call a perpendicular bisector. The word perpendicular is used to describe two lines that meet at right angles. To construct a perpendicular bisector, we first of all need a line segment, so let's take this line segment AB. Since it's a bisector, we need to split this line into two equal size smaller lines, but since it's a perpendicular bisector, the line that we use to split them needs to be at a right angle. To do this, we take a pair of compasses and place it at one end of the line, so I'm going to place it at A. You then open the width of the compasses to more than half of the length of the line, and this is important. You then draw yourself an arc that starts at the bottom, goes through the line, and ends at the top like this. We then take the pair of compasses and switch the point to point B, but crucially again, we do not change the width of the pair of compasses at this point. We draw ourselves a similar arc starting below the line, going through and ending above the line like this. If we then take a ruler and connect together the two points where these arcs intersect, we will have formed a perpendicular bisector. What this means is that the line segment AB has now been split into two equal size smaller line segments, specifically with a line that crosses them at 90 degrees. Sometimes we have to construct a perpendicular line, but it doesn't have to go through the middle, so it's not a bisector. Take this line segment here AB. Let's imagine we wanted to construct a perpendicular line through this one, but specifically through this point here P, which is not in the centre. So it would need to look something like this. To do this, we take our pair of compasses and place the point on the point P. We then draw a small arc on one side of point P that goes through the line AB, and without changing the size, we draw one on the other side as well. We can then label on these points as C and D. If we take a closer look at the line CD, which I've marked on in green, the point P must be right in the centre. So if we ignore the line AB for a moment and just focus on the line CD, we can construct a perpendicular bisector of the line CD, and we know this will go through point P since it's in the middle. So we take our pair of compasses and place them on the point C. We make sure they're opened up to over half of the length of the line, and draw our first arc like this. Then we switch the point to point D, but don't change the size of the pair of compasses, and draw a second arc like this. We now know that if we connect these two intersection points together, it will go through the middle of the line, so through the point P. So we've now managed to draw a line that's at 90 degrees with the line AB, but specifically goes through this point P. Sometimes the point P is not actually on the line at all, it could be above or below the line. So what if we wanted to draw a perpendicular that went through this point P here? Well it's actually quite similar. We take the pair of compasses and place them on the point P, and construct an arc like this that goes through the line AB in two places. If we label those on as C and D, then we have this green line here CD, and if we construct a perpendicular bisector of this one, it will go through the point P. So we take our pair of compasses, place them on C, make sure we've opened them up to more than half of the length of the line, 
draw our first arc, then switch over to point D without changing the size of the pair of compasses and draw our second arc. Then if we connect these two intersection points together, it must go through the point P. So we draw a line like this, which is now through P and once again at a right angle. It's important when you answer construction questions not to rub out your construction lines. You can think of them as you're working out for these questions. Next we're going to look at how we construct triangles. You may be asked to use only a ruler and compasses to construct a triangle with some specific information. For example, AB is 10, AC is 8, and BC is 6. In this question we've been given information about the lengths of all of the sides. To start a question like this, I would find the side which is the longest and just draw that on with a ruler. So we can see that AB is 10 centimeters, that's the longest. So if we take a ruler and draw a 10 centimeter line, and then we can label that as AB and 10 centimeters. Now let's look at the next line, AC, which is 8 centimeters. So we need to draw a line from A to another point C that's 8 centimeters in length, but we won't really know where this point is going to be. So what we do is take our ruler and a pair of compasses and open them up so they're exactly 8 centimeters wide, so something like this. If we then place the sharp point at A and draw an arc like this, we know that our point C must be somewhere on this arc, because if we take a point like this one here, that must be 8 centimeters away from A, and so must this one, and so must all of these points. So all of the points on this arc are 8 centimeters away from A, so C must be somewhere on this arc. If we then do a similar thing with the line BC, BC is 6 centimeters, so if we take the ruler and the pair of compasses, and open them up to 6 centimeters. If we place them on point B and draw an arc like this, all of these points must be 6 centimeters away from the point B. So our point C needs to be on the arc which was from A since it's 8 centimeters away, but also on the arc from B because it's 6 centimeters away. There's only one point that's on both of those arcs, which is this point here. So this must be our point C. It's 8 centimeters from here and 6 centimeters from here. So this is the point C, and this is the triangle ABC. Once again, you do not want to rub out your construction lines for this question. What if we're asked to construct another triangle, PQR, and we're told that PQ is 8, QR is 7, but rather than giving us another side, we're given an angle. So angle PQR is 70 degrees. For a question like this, it might say complete and accurate drawing of the triangle PQR. We'll start once again by drawing the longest side that we have, so PQ, which is 8 centimeters. So we'll take a ruler and draw an 8 centimeter line like this, and we can label it as PQ and 8 centimeters. Next, we have the line QR, which is 7 centimeters, but also we're told that angle PQR is 70 degrees. In this question, it uses the word complete rather than construct, and it hasn't mentioned that we only need to use a ruler and a pair of compasses, in which case we're allowed to use a protractor for this question. So we can take a protractor and place it on the point Q, since angle PQR needs to be 70 degrees, and we'll mark on where 70 degrees would go. This zero here is on the line PQ, which tells us we'll need to use the outside scale. So if we go around the outside scale until we get to 70 degrees, and then mark a point here, any line that we draw from Q through that point will give us a 70 degree angle. But we also know that the line QR needs to be 7 centimeters. So if we take a ruler and draw a line that goes through this point we marked that's 7 centimeters long, then this line will be 7 centimeters, but also this angle will be 70 degrees. Which means this is the point R, and we can connect that down to P to complete our triangle. We're going to construct one more triangle, triangle DEF where DE is 7, angle DEF is 55, and angle EDF is 65. So this time we have just one side, but two angles. The question also asks us to complete an accurate diagram again, rather than the word construct, which means we're allowed to use the protractor. So we'll start by drawing the only length we have, which is side DE at 7 centimeters. So we'll draw a 7 centimeter line, and we will label that one as DE and 7 centimeters. Now we have angle DEF, which is 55, which will be the angle that's at point E. So if we take the protractor, once again the zero here is on the outside scale, so we go around the outside scale to 55 degrees and mark on a point here. This means that if we take a ruler 
and draw a straight line from E through this point, then we've made a 55 degree angle here, which means that point F must be somewhere on this grey line, we just don't know where yet. Let's have a look at angle EDF, which will be the angle that's at D. So this time we take our protractor and place it at point D. The zero this time is on the inside scale, which means we need to go around the inside scale until we hit the desired angle size of 65 degrees, which will be about here. So we mark on this point, and we want to once again draw a straight line from D through this point. So if we do that, then we know that this angle here must be 65 degrees. So where these two lines intersect is the only place where point F could be. So we can mark on this point as point F, and here is our completed triangle. One more thing you need to be able to do at GCSE is construct angles of particular sizes using only the ruler and pair of compasses. We need to do 90 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 30 degrees. Now you actually already know how to do 90 degrees, because we can just draw a perpendicular bisector like we did earlier. So if you're ever asked to draw a 90 degree angle, take a line and construct a perpendicular bisector like this. You then know you have a 90 degree angle. So that's 90 degrees done. What about 45 degrees? Well, if you take 90 and divide it by 2, you end up with 45. So we could split this angle into two equal sized angles and they would both be 45. So if we take this 90 degree angle and do an angle bisector, we will have made a 45 degree angle. So you can do exactly that, like we did in the second example of this video. We construct an angle bisector like this, and this angle will now be 45 degrees. So that's 45 degrees done, what about 60 degrees? Well, if you take an equilateral triangle where all sides are the same length, then all of the interior angles are 60 degrees. So we can construct a 60 degree angle if we can construct an equilateral triangle. To do this, take a ruler and draw one of the sides of the triangle. I'm going to make it seven centimeters. We then need to make sure that the other two sides are also seven centimeters. To do this, we take our pair of compasses and open them up to the exact width of the line. We draw an arc on one side like this, switch them over to the other side without changing the size, and draw another arc from that side. And if we connect together the point of intersection down to each end of our line, these lines must all be 7 centimeters, so this must be an equilateral triangle, which means that this angle here must be 60 degrees. So we've managed to construct a 60 degree angle as well. There's only one more to go, which is 30 degrees. Well, if you divide 60 by 2, you get 30. So if we bisect this 60 degree angle, we'll have a 30 degree angle. So we'll construct an angle bisector of this angle. So just like we did near the start of the video, we end up with an angle bisector that looks like this, which means that this angle here must be 30 degrees. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not try the exam questions in this video's description.